Praise Helix. Praise Helix. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And it's challenge finale time. Yes. We started challenges at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we each took on one Mm -hmm. as a way of sort of expanding our horizons this year. And generally, like, getting better at a thing that we wanted to do and keeping each other accountable and having a bit of fun. And, mm-hmm. and uh, it's been a year. Well, almost a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by the time this goes up, it'll, it'll be probably, what, a month or less. Yeah. So, uh, my challenge, well, I guess we'll recap our challenges before we do our icebreaker, because that'll mm-hmm. make our icebreaker make more sense. Yeah. Uh, my challenge was to plank and get my plank time up every single day with a mind to, or at the very least, um, improve my time with a mind toward um, doing handstand. Sort of a, a physical test. And yours? Mine was a doodle a day. So, mm-hmm. um, fairly... You can find his Tumblr in the show notes. Yeah, you can find the Tumblr down below. Um, fairly unstructured, just some sort of doodle every day posted up to the Tumblr page. So our icebreaker is, what is your challenge on hard mode? Because the last time we did our, we did our challenge check-in, mm-hmm. we talked about what is the challenge you desperately wouldn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, this is what is what is the next level of this? Like, what is what makes it even harder? Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess I can go first. Go so <clears throat> doodles are fairly straightforward. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look through the timeline of the Tumblr you'll see that um, I experimented a little bit with color and painting-like doodles earlier in the year. Um, And then as I got bogged down with work and whatnot, they largely became post-it note doodles. Um, So fairly straightforward, anything that I was working on. So to make it more challenging, um, I imagine if I were to try to write a story, like, or sorry, tell a story with the images. Like, draw a comic for... Basically. So, like, either um, one panel at a time, or a family circus style, just single image. Mm. So, I'm not sure... I'm I'm sure the the family circus one would be a little bit easier to do, because you can just have a separate story every day, whereas... Family circus is pretty much easy mode. Yeah, whereas if I were to do... The equivalent of well, maybe not a three panel, but like just every day a new panel telling uh, a story for three hundred so this year sixty six days. Mm-hmm. That would be rough. That would be rough. Um, but I suppose I don't know. You, yeah, that would be an interesting challenge, though. Yeah. So that would be my challenge on hard mode. Mine, um, mine was a, mine was a physical challenge because we talked about it when we were first setting them up, and Huck's like. I could do the, the, the fitness challenge, and I'm like, you do the fitness everything. You're the fitness guy, and I'm, I'm not the fitness guy, so I'll do a fitness challenge, and it'll be hard. And I was right um, for a bunch of different reasons, but um, the hard mode for my challenge was, like, because mine was about improving strength and stamina. It, was, it, it wasn't about, like, hitting a specific workout pattern or anything like that. It was plank and it consistently improve my planking time. And I can definitely see in the graph like arcs of improvement. Mm-hmm. But uh, the hard mode would have been to attach some kind of like uh, weight loss goal to that because there's a lot more moving parts mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in that. That, mean, that means having a more structured workout plan, but it also means restructuring uh, diet mm-hmm. and lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, which is a worthwhile thing to do, mm-hmm. uh, but it would have been really hard for sort of just like a go-ahead challenge. Yeah, and I imagine it like so that's hard enough as it is, but by the time you hit say month ten or eleven, without radically pushing yourself, you would hit a natural plateau in terms of weight loss just in that context. Yeah. So I mean, like, it, like you'd really have to change a lot in order to maintain any kind of improving of the stat you know otherwise Mm -hmm. otherwise basically it'll just hit something and then your body adapts and then suddenly you'll be gaining weight again Mm -hmm. so yeah loss is weird Hmm. so results how'd it go 
Um, you're not done the year yet, mm-hmm. but I think as of filming this morning, I hit three twenty-seven. Uh, because I remember remarking or thinking yesterday, I'm only 40 days away from finishing. Mm. Um, overall, I managed to, to post every day, and I think I talked about this in the check-in, with the exception of one or two days where um, it was, it was uh, I had to play catch-up or something. But for the most part, um, I was able to hit my target and, and post every day. Um, there was a couple times when I was able to get ahead and have um, posts in the bag, but that hasn't happened in a couple months now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, mostly it's posting the day of. And, and I should say, like if we're going to talk about full-on results, I started off a lot stronger and a lot more enthusiastic earlier in the challenge, where at the challenge check-in I talked about almost always posting consistently by noon. Mm-hmm. Now I'm posting, you know, if you look at the timestamps, I think Tumblr does timestamps, but you would notice that I'm posting 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon um, when I'm kind of waiting for work to end, and so I'm just trying to procrastinate from doing work. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'll be posting at 7 or 8 o'clock at night when I'm at home, you know, procrastinating from prepping for my course. You can see there's a lot of procrastination in there. <laughs> um, and then this weekend, uh, I think... Saturday, Sunday, I posted at eleven thirty at night. I was just squeaking it in, and Saturday night I was I was drunk, so I <laughs> I went Saturday night I, I went into the washroom because we were getting ready to leave, and I realized I hadn't I hadn't posted, and if I waited until we got home, it probably would have been the next day. So I like really sloppily drew a bottle, put a label on there, said beer, took a picture, um, you know, made it all cleaned uh, cleaned it up and stuff, and posted in like I'm drunk. This is what you get. <laughs> that was that was the caption that, with it. That is the other thing. I, I, I will. So, so my challenge, I I failed my challenge resoundingly uh, in a bunch of interesting ways, um, and you can see on the graph sort of like where I recommit. Um. But uh, there was it was one of the things was that one of the things I needed to demonstrate was consistent improvement. Um. So further into the year. I can't just be like, oh, well, I planked for 15 seconds or I planked for 20 seconds. Like, I was up to two, two three minute or, or, or three minute planks uh, across multiple sets uh, and stuff like that. I was experimenting with a bunch of different planking styles, uh, none of which shows on the graph, unfortunately, but it was just sort of a, a way to, because um, I was doing a couple of different planking challenges, and it was a way to improve my. Uh, general fitness for that, so things like side planks, Spider-Man planks, um, you know, one-hand planks, things like that. One-hand planks are super hard, by the way. I bet. Like, <laughs> Jesus. I weigh like 350 pounds. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, like, like and, and part of that, I think, weighed on me is the notion that not, not only do I have to do it, but I have to do it longer and it's going to be harder than it was yesterday. Every every day gets more difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I tried to I tried to push it when, whenever I was pushing. I tried to push for five more seconds a day, mm-hmm. and then I would cheat by whatever my timer was set to. I would try and hold it for five seconds longer than that, mm-hmm. which I picked up from working with a trainer is that always try and go a little farther than you think you can. Mm-hmm. Because it reminds you that you can keep doing it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there are definitely points where I was just, like, worn out. But anything that happened that disrupted my routine, like, immediately just threw it out the window. Well, and I, I think I deserve some of the blame on that, too, is I didn't nearly keep you accountable as much as I could have or should have. You know, every once in a while, I would po- pop over to the website and I would I would click on it and I am like, oh Jim, like you haven't you haven't updated the graph in a while, and you'd be like, no, 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 I have not. I I have not updated the graph because I haven't been updating the yeah. the data, and uh, and I probably should have. You know, <laughs> I promise you, the graph is up to date. Yeah, so I, I probably uh, should have should have um, poked you a few more times, but um, I mean, if it helps as well. Uh, since Scotland, I have gone to the gym probably as many times as I have fingers on my right hand. Yeah, Scotland definitely does. Like, it was, it was a a. 
good of you to point that out. I just, I'm not the six fingered man. Just had to point that out. You could have six fingers on your left hand. <laughs> oh dear. Our audio um, only listeners are confused right now. That seems fine. Yeah. Um, no, Scotland was definitely a big sort of disruption to like all my routines. Yeah. And I did a bit of other traveling that much month too. I was at Convergence. Yeah. And. Like, I don't deal well with disrupting, I, I, I like, things that disrupt my routines to the point where, like, when I travel, I, the first thing I do when I, like, settle in a hotel room is, like, immediately establish new routines. Because mm-hmm. um, otherwise, I just don't, you know, I, my whole life falls apart. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you're not alone in that. I mean, like, no. my fitness routine fell apart. It's like Scotland disrupted it. And then I started teaching. And that was the huge disruptor. And I've been joking around with you a little bit. Mm-hmm. That I finally found the, the, the point in which I think I've overcommitted a little bit too much. <laughs> which is three jobs and a bunch of volunteer work. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I realized that the first thing to go. And this is one of those interesting reflection pieces. Like when you reflect on your priorities. Fitness was the first thing to go. Um, and actually really, I, I walk it back that sleep was the first thing to go. Fitness naturally dis- disappeared from that and other healthy decisions. So, I mean, I learned something as well, but as related to the art challenge, I don't know. It's like my, my challenge was ridiculously easy relative to yours. So I, I feel, feel good about that. I, Thank I, you. I almost feel bad. Like, <laughs> like how easy it is for me to just, I mean, some, some days I don't know what to draw and like, it's, you know, kind of a bullshit doodle because I need to post something, but like it's so easy for me to, to do anything. Um, just putting something to paper, taking a picture, as long as I have a Wi Fi signal, it's good. Mm-hmm. As opposed to like committing to some sort of quality standard, I think that would have made it a little bit more challenging for me. But and, uh, like I was hoping, I was hoping to get up to a five or six minute plank. I discovered around two minutes, two and a half minutes, that half the problem with planking is that you start to get bored. Because you're just sitting there and, like, you're thinking about the physical strain you're undergoing. Mm-hmm. And I'd try and watch videos or, like, listen to podcasts and stuff, but it wouldn't... It would distract me from my form, which meant I'd have to refocus on my... Like, like I didn't... I don't, And I don't think I ever hit a, a comfy medium with that. Did you never listen to music? Um... I don't typically listen to music when I'm working out, mostly because I'm bad at it. Mm-hmm. At like organizing the playlists and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but in all and and like the places that I work out are alternately um, in this in my apartment uh, where I have roommates, and it's five in the morning, yeah. which means that if I make a bunch of noise, my roommates are going to murder me. Mm-hmm. Uh, or in my workout room downstairs, because my apartment building does have a, an exercise room. Which is really just like a storage closet with some stuff in it. Yeah. But um, there's a big, huge fan in there. Yeah. That feeds into our building's HVAC system, and it's it's just it's so loud. You can't hear shit. Good excuse to blast heavy metal then. Basically, yeah. But uh, no, I, I definitely I definitely think that there's uh, there's ways I could have improved that. But I knew that by picking that challenge like that and making it hard. I would either step up or learn something, and one of the things I learned too is 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 the way that I prioritize time. Mm-hmm. So for me, I never sacrifice. I almost never sacrifice sleep. Mm-hmm. I sleep for like six and a half, seven hours a night, and I'm very sort of particular about that mm-hmm. because it's basically the minimum amount that I can like sleep and be a functional human being. Yeah, you know, I get up at five, and. The idea is I get up at 5, I work out for an hour, and then from 6 to 8, I write. Mm -hmm. But the place where I get wiggle room on that, like if I I need more sleep or or something like that, is between 5 and 6. And then my response to that wasn't to cut away writing time, it was to skip fitness time. And so part of that goes back to the, the notion that like, that is the time I'm willing to compromise on. Yeah. And that is a thing that I need to sort of realign in my priorities. Or at the very least, I want to realign in my priorities. And it was a thing I didn't know until I spent a year tracking it. Yeah. I mean, I probably... I, I knew after spending two months tracking it. But I, I tried a bunch of different... like, And you can see in the graph where I'll, like, 
I'll try a bunch of different strategies to like adjust yeah. and to recommit. Uh, exercise for me is definitely a consistent process of like self forgiveness and recommitment. Mm-hmm. That's and the I, only way to do I it. hope, yeah, I hope that that is true for basically everyone, yeah. unless you're like a super cool fitness person and that's just like your whole life, like, like uh, an integral part of your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, in which case, I don't know how you do that. Yeah, uh, going off the art challenge for a second, um, with working the multiple jobs and whatnot, I realized maybe next year one of my, my personal challenges will be to focus more on sleep. Um, mm. and that, <laughs> that's that's a challenge I can work on. Yeah, so I mean, like, just for example, today, uh, before we started filming, uh, I picked up an indoor light timer from uh, Canadian Tire. With uh, I'm going to attempt to to see if I can trick myself. I have very poor... I've, I've, I've got very good acrasia, a very good weakness of the will. <laughs> um, and so I have a really bad habit of staying up late and, you know, surfing the web. YouTube is kind of my crutch. It's the thing that I, I sit there for hours and do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think I might hook up my router to a light timer and just shut off the internet at a certain time. And, and I, I think next year I want to focus on, on better sleep habits, which is really tough because I still work at a bar. Yeah, so your 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 work schedules are really awkward. Yeah, where yeah. You're like mine mine is at least consistent. Yeah, and if I'm up until you know midnight or something, then it's usually because I have made an error. Mm-hmm. Um, because I also like I, I rarely find find myself in a position where I can't sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, that is happily a an issue I don't have. But. No, I think that that I, I I do not have a sleeping challenge for for next year. If my if I have a personal challenge for next year, it is do more, and I mean it's always do more. Mm-hmm. But part of that is gonna be it is still gonna be fitness related. It's gonna be now that I've learned these lessons, like now that I have resoundingly failed at a thing. How do I reorganize and reprioritize in a way that will help me succeed? Uh, I think you can tap in, just as a, a, a early sketch, you can tap into what made mine successful. Is It had very clear um, success conditions that mm-hmm. were very um, transparent in terms of how to, how to approach it. Um, and I found with fitness, it was the same deal right up until, so that, and that's the thing is the, the strength of my fitness routine was ultimately tested when you add a little bit of resistance to it. And that's where it crumbled. It crumbled after Scotland and then it crumbled in the face of, of, uh, teaching. Um, so I, I learned that I need a, a more robust system that doesn't rely necessarily on the gym, but doesn't necessarily rely on willpower either like i i haven't cracked that nut yet but through the art challenge i found that having you know a consistent deadline um it was very small and incremental so it was easy to stick with Mm -hmm. um and once you got the chain going it was really easy to um, not break the chain and there was an accountability built into there because like i was posting a daily thing yeah it's not like it's oh i have I have to meet it three times a week, and there's seven days in a week, so I can, if I miss it today, I can do it tomorrow. It's no, it was a daily thing, and it was very obvious when it when it would when I would have missed the deadline. Yeah, definitely one of the things I noticed is um, I'm less and less committed to to like um, my building is a pool and an exercise room, mm-hmm. and uh, part of it is like I'm just generally super self conscious. But when you typically when you're up at five in the morning. Um, no one else is awake, which is wonderful. But I found myself focusing on, on body weight exercises and things like that, mm-hmm. rather than uh, like using the weight machines. Um, I don't I don't use free weights unless I have a spotter, or like bench pressing or mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, that um, makes sense. That's safety. So yeah. So, I mean, there's a there's there's definitely a point where. I'm I'm happy to like bench press you know twenty pounds or thirty pounds or whatever mm-hmm. without a spotter and I know that I'm not gonna you know drop it on myself and kill myself. Yeah. But I mean I've been, I got trapped under the bar once I was benching one eighty five. Yeah. And and I got pinned on the bench and thankfully uh, I mean I was I rolled it most of the way down my gut and tried to play it off cool but it didn't quite work so thankfully there was a guy 
I don't know, a bench over or something who saw it and helped to re-rack it for Yeah, me. like, happily, my, you know, my exercise room has cell reception, so I could, like, phone somebody, but, yeah. no, it's it's one of those things where, what I and what I want to be doing is, is pushing my limits. Like, working with, if there's one thing working with a trainer showed me, it's it's what it feels like to hit my limit. Um, fitness wise and and to know when I when I when I can't do any more and to understand what those limits are like mm -hmm. and how to push past them mm -hmm. so that is that is a feeling that I am that I am trying to chase on my own because it's discipline that I need to develop and maintain on my own and uh, one of the things I learned from my challenge is I currently don't have that yeah, I uh, and I've done a lot of reading this year too, and something that keeps popping up is definitely the idea of don't rely just on um, willpower alone. No, like you you have, um, and we've talked about this in various other podcasts in terms of like don't trust future Jim or don't trust future Ryan because they're 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 gonna slack off when you hit the the present mode, right? So I mean, yeah. like it's. You have to really learn to plan against your, not your specifically, but you have to really learn to plan against those uh, regress, regressions to the mean. Like you just want to always take the path of least resistance. You always want to slack off and find ways around it. Um, and if you're just relying on motivation or you're just relying on willpower, that's a, it's a dangerous mixture that's not going to go very long. Like, it's you're just going to end up petering out as soon as your motivation wanes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 like, this is, again, I get back to having a plan, having a routine. I do the same thing with writing. Mm -hmm. um, and it works with writing where I'm like, oh, it's Tuesday. What do I have to do on Tuesday? I have to finish any writing that I have to do for D&D. &D. Mm hmm um, or, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday morning. Thursday, I have to finish logging everything for D&D. Friday, I have to write a post for Mad Art Lab, etc. Mm -hmm. Like, it's... And it's the kind of, of thing that I already do with writing and, and, and video creation. Mm -hmm. But in that, I have a bunch of other people keeping me accountable. Yeah. Um, exercise happens at 5 in the morning in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, not typically in the dark, but... Maybe you need to resurrect the conspiracy of action. <laughs> Oh man, that was a good time. That was a good time. A lot of people. There's a lot of work baking at that time, baking and cooking. Yep. But uh, so we are going to do a challenge next year. Mm -hmm. Do we want to announce what that is, or do we want to wait? Um, I don't see why we should wait. I think. Okay, cool. I think we should just. It's your challenge. Our... This is this is entirely Huck's idea, and I am going along with it because I think it's great. I'm gonna. Also probably undertake a personal challenge, but I don't know that it'll be public yet. And again, it's probably going to be fitness related, but we'll yeah. see where that goes. Yeah, and I'm going to continue, like, I have my elaborate birthday ritual, and I'll continue setting my own personal challenges. Like I said, I think I'm going to do a challenge about sleep. Um, I've been vlogging every day this year, just privately on my channel, so don't try to search it. I, I don't make it public. It's just for my own uh, use. Um, so I have a year's worth of vlogs that maybe I should try to do something with, like watch a vlog, like try to watch the corresponding vlog mm. and, and compare where I am this year versus last year. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. I'd, and then I'd, vlog about it publicly? May, I don't know, maybe. Um, <laughs> so like there's that side of it. Um, and I think that's, that's two right there if I keep doing that. Um. Okay, what's our challenge? But our challenge, so I've gotten into more, um music creators on youtube Spe specifically like covers like i like metal covers and whatnot so mm -hmm. frog leap studios um jonathan oh, what's his last name he's in the show notes yeah i'm gonna throw him in the show notes it's jonathan something um and there's, there's a couple others and i've just been really impressed um with they they're posting at least a cover a week um, obviously they're super talented so it, it they can learn the song and mix it and record it in a week um, and so I thought wouldn't it be kind of cool to do something like that I, I would use the term skilled instead of talented like that's the kind of thing you get good at yeah and okay that's that's fair it's not it may not necessarily be native. so yeah I just don't want to under, undersell them yeah so but anyways they are disciplined and 
uh, practiced enough to be able to do that. And I don't know how many people they employ to assist them with putting up a video a week, but at the very least they record a music video and a song per week. And it's, they, it's recorded, um, it's high quality enough recordings that they're also selling the tracks on the various peripheral sites, nice. right? So it's not just that they're shooting a video of themselves. I don't think we should necessarily strive for the video side of it. I think we should just stick with audio. But I think we're going to try to do a song a month. Yeah, as, we, can, as, as we, can, a, we can do a video for a song. A yeah, month. as, a, as I can a, make that happen. <laughs> at the very least, as a the Woot Suit family, which will be Jim and I, and uh, Kaylee. Kaylee is is definitely on board. Anybody else we can rope in? Right. So we're going to try to do a song a month. So twelve songs over the, uh, over twenty seventeen. Um, we haven't chosen all the songs yet, but we started filling in some of them. Mm. And uh, it's a mystery. It's a mystery a surprise. So. Far. so our first song, I think we said we're going to go up mid January. Yep, is what we're what we're looking at. So that is that's going to be our cha- uh, channel challenge twenty seventeen. I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to. It. I am nervous because I committed to helping to learn music. Now, thankfully, thankfully, you and Kaylee are are a lot more adept at it than I am, and so I can come in and do vocals for the first couple and ease into playing an instrument. But yeah, yeah for. I, our first song is... I appreciate your desire to do vocals, which is why I think maybe we'll decide that, and this is definitely not actually going to happen, mm-hmm. but our first song should be uh, Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but so... And th- this challenge was also partially inspired by our trip to Scotland um, and the idea of the party piece. Yeah. Uh, and I realized that I am god awful when it comes to, to playing and so this would be a, a good way to incentivize me to I don't think you're god awful uh, I think you're self conscious oh well, there's that too like and I remember being like that mm-hmm. you know a few years ago um, like now I don't play guitars at parties because in America if you play guitar at a party you're the asshole with a guitar at the party yeah um, but yeah, like there, there's a point where where it's easy to think that you're you're not good enough, um, or it's easy to to see other musicians who are better than you. Um, but more often than not, other musicians recognize that it is your sort of responsibility uh, to be the biggest fan of everybody else around that table. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, and I got that experience in Scotland as well, playing with, you know, people who've been playing the mandolin for 60 years and who have, like, levels of... I, I got a real deep look mm-hmm. into what mastery actually looks like mm-hmm. and, and where I stand in relation to it. And it's miles and miles away. But it's not nowhere. No. So, yeah, 2017 will be a music challenge. And we're going to go over the details of that uh, in the new year once we have firmed up what those details are. Yeah. So, uh, I want to know what challenges you're going to undertake. Um, what challenges you have undertaken, what challenges you've faced, things you've, things you've succeeded at, things you've failed at. Because it's, it's an exciting thing to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can leave that in the comments. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook and at WootsuitRiot.com. Huck's Twitter is in the show notes, as is mine, so you can feel free to heckle us individually or collectively. And, uh, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Maybe the moral message is the unexamined life isn't worth living. I don't get a, I'm getting the feeling that most of life isn't worth living at the moment. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs>